Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, good afternoon, and welcome back to another Porsche Cooled Podcast. This is the Owner Stories uh, episode of the Porsche Cooled Podcast. This is number three, and I'm really, really looking forward to this episode. Uh, as you know, every every Porsche, as I say, tells a different story, and each owner has a story to tell, and that's what uh, the Owner Stories of the Porsche Cooled Podcast is all about. Um, today, I have a special guest from the UK, Another person from the UK, um, and Ajmal is Ajmal is really really interesting. Uh, he has a YouTube channel uh, called Flat Flat Cap Driver. I will get to say that properly once. Um, Flat Cap Driver on YouTube. Um, so make sure you check that out. Do a search for it. Follow him. Subscribe. He also has an Instagram under the same name. Uh, and Ajmal as actually uh, he. He started his journey, I think, about a year ago. I want him to tell us. I don't want to. I don't want to let too much. I don't want to give too much away in the beginning. I want uh, Ajmal to tell us what his story is. Um, but one, he bought first. He bought the cheapest 911 in the UK, and that's how he uh, titled all his videos on YouTube. And now he's just bought something that I'm really, really interested in talking to him about. You probably noticed from the title of this uh, of podcast what it is, but let's get Ajmal. We're going to do this by Zoom again. Um, Zoom has limitations, so excuse the sound. Uh, Ajmal is going to call him by his phone, so I haven't done it through phone before. It's always been through the computer, um, and I'm not. I don't have the ability to record Ajmal's trucks track separately, so it's just going to be the Zoom recording. So please excuse if it if it sounds like it's distant. Uh, that's just what Zoom does. I've got it set up so it records in the best possible way. Um, but you know, there are limitations to zoom. Um, and before we, before we get Ajmal on the line from the UK, uh, like I said, it's Saturday afternoon, Saturday evening here in Bahrain, late early Saturday evening, uh, Saturday afternoon in the UK. And Ajmal has given us uh, an hour of his time, which is really nice of him on the weekend. Um, and we'll talk to him about his Porsche soon, but I just want to say thank you to everybody for supporting the podcast. Thank you for the Patreon members. And thank you for, for just listening to the podcast, basically. I mean, it's had – the downloads have just gone insane on the podcast, and I, I really, really appreciate it. Uh, it seems like your guys, you guys out there are really enjoying the conversation between me and Steve. Uh, I know you're enjoying the owner's stories. I've had a few people send me messages about it. So I think you're going to enjoy this one. So let's get into it. Let's get Ajmal on Zoom, and let's start talking uh, Porsche owner stories. All right. So welcome back, everyone. Um, I've got Ajmal here from the UK. I'm not sure where Ajmal is, but we're probably not going to tell everyone that. But Ajmal, as I said, has a YouTube channel. Uh, he has two Porsches, which I'm going to get him to tell everyone about very shortly. Uh, he's much better than me in that he is spontaneous. It feels like he's very spontaneous in his Porsche, uh, Porsche buying. Um, but hello, Ajmal. Welcome to the podcast. Hello, and thank you for having me on. Glad you could be here. Thanks for um, taking the time out on a Saturday afternoon. Um, so I think before we, I think we, we need to introduce you to the listeners and, and so everyone knows, you know, what you're all about. Um, so you have a YouTube channel and yep. the YouTube channel you started, how long ago did you start that, Ajmal? Uh, it's just over a year, maybe coming up to about 18, no, about a year, about a year I think it is. Yeah, and I was looking through, I mean... I might have mentioned it to the, to the, in, the, in, the, in the beginning introduction, but I, I found you because I was searching 912. Uh, and the listeners of this podcast know that I'm looking for a 912 and I'm obsessed by the 912. Um, and I searched 912 and you came up. And I've never seen your videos before. And I watched the one where you actually, the first one where you bought the 912, um, which I thought was quite funny uh, and quite quite interesting and then i go back to your to channel and and there's you're uh you're a two porsche guy you don't have one porsche you actually have two so i tell do. tell everyone about the 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 cheapest 911 in the uk <laughs> well that was it was a ridiculous thing i was out with a friend of mine and he's been going on about i really want a 911 uh there's so much money what should i do and i just said on Saturday, we had a couple of drinks, and I said, well, I think they're so affordable now, a 911, that I could just go out tomorrow, buy the cheapest one, just go to the auto trader, the local, um, the UK search engine, and put in the details for a manual, uh, hard top, 
with an MOT and I'll be able to go and buy the cheapest one and make it run it for a year with no problems, with massive enjoyment. Um, and he said, go on then. So right there and then I did the search. It came up with one for about nine and a half thousand pounds at 996. Wow, that, that's a good price. Yeah. So I, um, I, I messaged the owner there and then I said, can I come and see this tomorrow? And, uh, and they said, yes. And so I woke up the next day with a fuzzy head and I thought, shit, uh, what have I done? I've got to go through with it. It was, it was so far away. It was two and a half hours on the train. Right. Uh, then after getting off on the train, it was another half hour in a taxi. So I I thought that's it. I'm going to do it. So I headed off, uh, to the deepest, darkest parts of Wales. And, uh, when I arrived at the train station, the lady messaged me who owned it and said, shall I meet you at the car park at the train station? Now, when buying a car, that's an ultimate no-no. You yes. don't meet somebody in a yeah, car. Yeah, true. <laughs> uh, it's still in my fuzzy head. I went, yeah, sure. <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> so she arrived with this car, and it had moss growing on it. Oh, really? Um, so yeah, had she, she driven the car? Was she driving the car, or was it just being stored in a driveway? Or uh, Well, she said that it belonged to her husband, who died about two or three years earlier. Right. And she said every year it got yet less and less use, and now it's just parked, and I just want it out of my life. So I had a look around it. I thought, oh, I'm not really sure. The air conditioning doesn't work. You know, there's all sorts of stuff. The bar- the hood doesn't stay up, and it hit me on the head twice while I was trying to have a look. Yeah. Um, and I didn't know what I was looking for. Anyway, I've never seen. I've never been in in one of those before. <laughs> so. I did a tiny bit of research, you know, where people, uh, this was on the train on the way there. I did a couple of Googles on what I should look for. There were all sorts of horror stories about IMS bearings. Yes, yes. God knows what else. So I just thought, do you know what? Ignore all that. Yeah. I mean, so, I, so when I, I own a 997 oh Carrera, so I've had those, you know, those thoughts as well about the IMS because um, I own a 997.1 Carrera, but in Australia. Yeah. Um, so that's where my car is. I'm sort of like all over the place. <laughs> well, I think that's the, the, so. One of the things that I thought was no, I'll, I'll just procrastinate then and talk myself out of it. So I just thought, forget all of those horror stories. I'll see what it's like. Um, it was pretty rough, but I thought, fine. I've committed. To, it's the cheapest one. I've committed to buy this car. So, um, so I said, well, I might as well have a test drive of it. I drove it ten meters, and the brakes failed. Oh, really? Um, <laughs> yeah, the pedal went to the floor. Fluid was everywhere, and. Um, I got out. I, I said to her, look, I, I can't really make you an offer. It'd be really insulting, uh, even if you've got it fixed. So, you know, I'm going to have to leave it. So she messaged me the, the next day and said, look, just make me an offer. I won't be insulted. I've got the brakes fixed. Come and test drive it. Oh, okay. Um, so I just sent her a message saying, I'll give you six and a half thousand pounds for it. Right. And, and? I, I felt really bad because I said, look, I gave her a list of the reasons why I thought to me, it was worth six and a half thousand pounds. And the last thing I said in my message was, someone else could come along and pay you asking price. So don't think that I'm the only offer in town. Yes. Um, and she messaged me straight back and went, I just want it gone. I'll come and test drive it. You can have it for six and a half. And I just replied with, I can't be bothered to come and test drive it. I'll send somebody to pick it up. <laughs> so you just got it delivered. I watched that video, actually. You just got it delivered by someone to your, to your house, right? Yep. Yep, I just phoned, I just uh, emailed somebody locally that I'd Googled and said, can you go and pick this car up for me? They did, so, I transferred over the money. So the first time you drove it, and I've watched the video and, and listeners probably haven't watched the video. So the first time you drove it, were you pleasantly surprised or were you thinking, what well, have I done? Well, the first bit was that the, when the, they fixed the brakes, they didn't bleed the brakes. There's a lot of air in them. So I, I kind of ended up in a hedge uh, right. because I went to do a three point turn and it went up the curb and into a hedge. Um, but after that, I was really pleasantly surprised. It went great. It was incredibly reliable. The performance was amazing. I could, I could redline it as often as I wanted to. Uh, it's brutal when you hit the limiter. Um, it, but it's and, a 1998, it, isn't it? It's a 1998 yes. Carrera two manual. Yeah. And it's, uh, it had 147,000 miles. Okay, so high mileage. So was it, had it, yeah. did it have a service history? Was it actually been, had it been looked after? Uh, yes, it had a massive service history. It just, she just gave me these two supermarket bags, Tesco bags okay. full, uh, of just tons of paperwork. So I asked her all the usual questions. Has it had a clutch? Has it this? Has it that? And she said, I don't know. So I just looked through all of these things, found out that it had all the all the important stuff done. Yeah. Um, so and a, a really lovely touch. She put a, 
a bottle of wine in one of the bags. Oh, really? Say, Congratulations, wow. Lombard. And it's such a lovely lady. And you know when you get a feeling about somebody, and it kind yeah. of gave me the confidence to make the offer. But also, um, it's one of those things where it, when buying a Porsche, if you read all of the guides, it tells you go and buy the best one that you can afford. Yes, yes. Um, and then when you start doing that, so if you're looking for a 996, you'll get to the top end of that and you'll think, hang on, I'm in, I'm in 997 territory now. Yeah. I know, and I'll a lot of, for a 997. Sorry, a lot of 996s are getting there now, aren't they? A lot of 996s are on that borderline of 997 prices. And it doesn't... They are. It feels like 997 prices haven't jumped as much. I mean, I look okay. at UK prices and I look at Australia prices. I don't know about the US. <clears throat> but it looks like there's not so much of a gap there between the best 996 and the worst 997. They're kind of leveled out. That's true. But then that becomes a question of I'm not buying the best that I can afford. I'm buying the worst 997 I yeah. can afford. Yeah. Um, so I always go with, well, what's... I, 911 ownership and, and driving it day to day is so accessible now. Yes. And people always have that water cooled, air cooled uh, debate. But the 996, when it first came along, water cooled, it made it a daily driver. It made it. True. Sort true. Of, you know, that, that's why there's so many high mileage ones around. So when someone says, you know, I'm going to go and buy one, I always say, go and buy one for the money that you can afford to lose. Yes. Yes. And I think, you know, if, if you want a 911, and I've said this in, in a video that I was just making today, actually, if you want a 911, don't wait for the best one to come along. Do you know what I mean? Buy the one you can afford. Yes. Do as many checks as you can. There's always going to be something wrong with it. But, you know, if you, if you buy a 996, um, you know, the main thing that people say is if it's been driven a lot, then the IMS issue is probably ironed itself out. It's probably not going to happen. Yes. You know what I mean? And if people have done regular maintenance, they've checked their oil filter, et cetera, it's not going to happen. It's the cars that have the low mileage that you have to worry about. And like you said, a lot of 996s, no matter where you buy them, they're, they're high mileage cars. People did drive them daily. They did use them. Yeah. Um, and I think that's and probably, I'll... yeah, that's probably a good thing. That is a good thing. And then, I mean, that's one of the things that, because it's one of the most most hated 911s, as they call it, because of the lights, because of it being water-cooled. But if you look at any review from back then, all of them said it's better than the 993 in every single way Yes, at the time. Yeah, um, so so it, when, when it comes to owning one and you're thinking of, of buying one, for me it was for £6,500, if it dies tomorrow or the day after uh, in a year's time, do you know what? I'll put it on eBay and someone will buy it for £6,000 for parts. They'll take it away. But even after and 12 months of owning that, that car is worth more than £6,500 now. That's the thing. So people have offered me £10,000 to £11,000 yeah, for it. Because the price has now the, jumped very quickly. It, it, exactly. So my whole aim originally was, and that's why I, uh, I was inspired by uh, the motor journalist, uh, Johnny Smith, to go yes. and start a YouTube channel. Because I'd messaged him about what I was trying to do. And he oh, said, okay. you better do a YouTube channel. Uh, <laughs> so I, I started it for that. And I thought, in a year, I want to be able to tell people, just, just go and get one. Um, and the truth is, I was doing it now, I wouldn't be able to afford it for the budget that I had. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because it, because it's it's gone up that far. And even if you look at cars that are rusted, broken, whatever they might be, they're selling for more than I paid for it. And then you start going into the, well, I can't afford to lose that money. Um, but then I wish I'd thought more about when I bought the 912. I, Let's get on to that. Let's get on to the 912. We're not finished with the 996 yet. So you paid <laughs> six and a half thousand pounds for it. Um, yes. How much do you think you've put into it since you've since you've owned the car? Um, I haven't broken nine thousand yet. So nine thousand um, pounds, and you could actually sell it for a, a small profit. You'd get your money back now if you wanted to. Yes, because when you think about buying and selling a car, using it and then selling it, not I don't mean uh, flipping it or anything. Yes. Then you always try and take out the maintenance cost. But okay. um, it's it's been so a lot of the stuff that I've done I've done because it, it was probably a good idea to do, but. The one, the most expensive thing was three hundred and something pounds, and that was to get the air conditioning working. Uh, yeah. and that was just someone, someone had broken a pipe or something. So it was, it was pretty straightforward. I mean, I want people to go to your channel. I really do because I really like your channel. I think you have a really good. Oh, thank you. You have a really good on camera presence. You actually do. Uh, and when no, you do, and you. it's not easy to do YouTube videos. I mean. I did more of them. I don't do so many of them anymore, but it's not easy and people forget. It's, it's really not that easy to do. Um, and I think the 996, the 996, I have to say, if I ever do a podcast and it's about 996, 
it always gets a lot more downloads than anything else. So the 996 is something mm. that people want to know about because I think there's a lot of people out there wanting their first 911, looking at the 996, thinking, oh, can I deal with the headlights? But then the headlights now, people are thinking they're not so ugly. They're okay. You know what I mean? It is the first of water-cooled. It was, you know, very ahead of its time. It was a new generation, which a lot of people hated for that reason. But it is, you know, there's a lot of, uh, you know, technology there, which wasn't in the 993, as you said. And even on, on YouTube now, you know, like you're doing it. Uh, Lee from Total 911 is doing his... 996. Yes, he is, yeah. yeah, but he's obviously spending a lot more money with repainting, <laughs> etc. <et> <laughs> he and really Fug is. Fuchs yeah. wheels and PCM units and all those sort of things. Um, and then there's also James in America, James from Auto Amateur, who's another friend of mine, who's yeah, yeah. who they did a 996, Project 996, which is getting resprayed now, and he's going to do more videos on that. Um, so I think that there's a lot of there's a lot of interest in the 996, and I think it's a, a really good first car for people getting into Porsche. But what I'm getting to, Ashmal, I am getting to a point here. <laughs> you said to me on inst Instagram, on the DM, that you're not a Porsche guy, right? You said that to me. You said, I'm not a Porsche <laughs> <Yes>. guy, <laughs> right? I'm not a Porsche guy who bought a 996 with just like that and who's also bought a 912. Um, yes. So please explain how you how you became to be a Porsche guy if you weren't a Porsche guy. So it happened because where I take my 996 to have it works on uh, is a guy. Uh, he's on Instagram. You can look him up, Flat Six Jack, and he's an independent Porsche, uh, Porsche specialist. And he has a, a 912. It's parked there that he's working on for somebody. Right. And it's a. It, beautiful blue and i looked at it and and i remember looking i knew something about the 912 and just the general reading i thought oh yeah that's on the 356 engine um but I, when i saw it in person i thought that's a really nice looking car and i just had a quick sit in it and i thought yeah. that's a really cool looking car and it played on my mind a bit so i looked around a little bit and the only ones i would have been able to afford were the ones that were you know that had no floors you've seen the ones yes yes 15 15 under 15000 yeah. under 20000 pounds sorry and they will literally have no floors they're either imported from the us where they've been sat with water inside them or or they've got grass growing inside them because they're uk cars um and then and then i forgot all of, all about it and then and i'm incredibly lazy i i don't know if you've got that from my <laughs> On my YouTube channel, but I do I, I do everything in with the least amount of effort. So I was just looking around, and then suddenly there's a, a, a an auction house, a classic car auction house that had this one come up, and I just started watching it. I asked a few questions, phoned them up. They put tons of photos on, something like fifty photos, um, and it wasn't a matching numbers car. It wasn't the original color. So I thought, well, I could kind of go to town. And then I'm not bound by keeping it original. Yeah. Um, so I went to have a look and it was in a trailer. So I just had a look basically from the outside. I didn't really get in. I didn't okay. really do anything. And I thought, I don't really, I don't really want to get under it. I don't really know what I'm looking for. So I just went home and I looked for, and it finished on Friday, the, on a Friday, the auction. So I thought, I, I do really want one, but I don't want it to sound like a beetle. I've, I've never driven an air cooled car. I've only ever been in, in one. Uh, so I, I just put a couple of bids in and as the evening went on, I had a little bit more to drink. And then I, there was one, it was getting to a point, I might win this. And I put a bid on. Um, and it ended up being £30,000 that I don't which have. I think it's quite a good, which you don't have, yeah. <laughs> but I think <laughs> 30000 sounds like quite a good price. I mean, I I don't know the condition of your 912. Um, you know, I've been, I've been searching for them. I've been looking at them and searching and like obsessed by them since about June this year. Um, being stuck here in Bahrain in COVID and being stuck in the apartment, I just started searching, bring a trailer, Beverly Hills Car Club in the US, which you probably have heard of that have yes, lots of 912s yep. and a lot of great mm. ones go through there. Mm. But I like to see the under, underside. I like to see those floor pans and see that they're not rusted out. And also some of them are really badly repaired. You know what I mean? So I'm a yes. little bit more hesitant yep. because I want to know what's going on with the car. The same as the orange one they sent you that's for sale in the UK. Mm. There's no pictures of the undercarriage. You know, I want to see that because that rust cutout thing can be quite expensive. It can be quite yes. an expensive job. Oh, that, and, and um, in so, the UK, that's so a big you didn't, problem. But you didn't feel nervous about buying this car without seeing... They had pictures of the undercarriage. Uh, they had pictures of the floor pans. They had... No? 
They did. They, oh, they, did. they had pictures of the, yeah, they did of the underside, but it was more stick the camera under the car kind of thing. It wasn't up on a lift or anything. Um, but it did have new floor pans. Oh, okay. Uh, so I thought, you know, someone's, someone's taken some time over that. It had uh, period tires on, which is always a good, good indicator. Yes. That someone's looked after it. It had um, recent paints by the looks of it. Um, but when, when I actually saw it properly, which is when it got delivered to flat six Jack and, and it's still there. Um, and I went and had a look and he'd given it the once over and he said, look, it's, it's smoking like you wouldn't believe. Okay. Uh, it's got tons of sound deadening missing. Okay. It's got new floor pans, but there's rust around it. Right. And I looked at the sills and they were quite rippled and I thought, hang on, is this, is this filler in the rust in the sills? Is there rust covered up? Um, so um, obviously you've seen the video where I took it for a drive. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and everyone should watch um, that video because it's a good one. Because it was, uh, where it and, just and it stops. was all like, a, yeah, and it stops and, and it, it stops. did run out of petrol. Yeah. 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 And, and so I, I, I think it's still worth the money I paid for it. So I'd still be able to sell it for that money, but it's not, if you think about the one that you sent me the link. So if that's, everything that owner says it is then that's only what nine thousand pounds more yeah and true. Uh, but so you'd think okay that's that's matching numbers it's immaculate it, well it looks immaculate but four so, speed you know but four speed yeah so, so not the right does not the, the right speed, gearbox does the four speed have the dog leg first as well i don't think so yeah because i think it's the five speed is isn't it i'm not 100 percent sure but so when you were looking for a 912 were you looking for a particular year were you looking for the 69 no. long wheelbase? You don't mind the, the short wheelbase? I would prefer, I preferred the short wheelbase. I have no idea why. I have right. done no research on it or anything. And I just knew the, the thing to look for that um, made it a short wheelbase. You know, the um, by the wheel for the um, suspension rod, yeah. um, there's, a, there's a little uh, cap. And if it's right next to the arch, it's a short wheelbase and it's a further away, it's a long wheelbase. Yeah, I think it was just 69, wasn't it? 69 was long wheelbase. And yeah. you could actually put um, bigger wheels on it, basically, as well. You could actually put larger larger wheels on the on the 69. Yeah, and the, and, and the arches were ever so slightly flared, I think, relative, relative yeah. to the short wheelbase. So I, I wasn't really wedded to any year or anything like that. Um, so when, it, when I started looking, I would literally filter all of my search criteria by uh, i would sort it by the nearest one first oh, okay so what what <laughs> year did what tell the listeners what year you bought because i don't think we've actually mentioned that you bought oh, a uh, it's a it's a 66 66 so um, it's five dial uh five dial five green dial um it's the dog leg five speed um and interior is the black leatherette uh, it, it, yeah, it's the black leatherette interior, uh, which is in decent shape. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think it's the original, um, but the, and it's got the the floors are, are new. Um, the engine isn't original, the gearbox isn't original, but it's it's correct for the period, but not original. So it's a um, sixty eight. It's a sixty eight engine. Yes, but um, it's not matching. But it's it's not matching. No. Sorry, sixty six. Yeah, so sixty six. Sorry, sixty six. Did you get any? Um, was there any history with the car, like previous owners, or any type of history from the US, or how it ended up in the UK, or did it end up in Europe um, first? It's uh, it's not a US car. It's an Italian one. Oh, okay. Uh, so it was delivered to Italy, um, Torino, I think, around Milan, Torino. Right. Um, right. And it lived over there and all of the work that's been done on it was, was done over there. Was that car for sale on a European car site? Had that been for sale somewhere else before the auction site? Because your car is I blue, isn't it? It's blue, right? Yeah, it's blue. Yep, blue. Yep. Which blue is it? The, the Porsche? Um, it, it's, the, it's the correct Porsche blue, but not the correct car, the color for that car. Right, right. It should have been sandy beige or something. Oh, the sand beige, yeah. Uh, that's one of yeah. my favorite. That's one of my favorite nine twelve, nine eleven classic colors of that sand beige. Uh, it's I think it, it's, it's a really nice period, period color. It? Yeah, but yeah, some of the blues absolutely. in mm, but some of the blues in the in the nine twelve are really nice too. I can't remember the name. Not Oslo blue. It's got another name. There's another blue which is yeah. actually a fantastic blue. 
And I, I would have been happy with something to have some patina. I'm not really bothered about, you know, the. it doesn't need to look immaculate on the outside. It no. just needs to be reliable, comfortable, and rust-free. And and that's the the holy grail, isn't it? They're, they're a rust-free one. Because everything else is so easy to get hold of and, and build and work on. It's just the bodywork's a killer of it. Yeah. So, that, so you've actually uh, had another look at it and there's a lot of rust? There is actually a lot of rust. There's stories. some rust, yes. So one of the things that kind of was upsetting was that it had recently been painted or undersealed underneath. So it's got seam sealer and all sorts on there. So I don't really know what's happening under there, but one of the spots on uh, under where the back seat should be, um, you could stick a screwdriver through. Oh, okay. Um, and and the, the paint you know is fresh because it's it's got no mud or anything on it. And I took it for a drive and then had a look and you could see it was fresh splashes of mud on there so um that was disappointing and i contacted the owner a previous owner and he said look you know it wasn't me that did that but yeah he said he used it so i don't know I'm, but I'm, I, I don't want to i don't want to yeah. demonize him but i think when you come back to it like what you said you know you paid thirty thousand pounds for it um it's another car that you really i can't see you're not gonna you're not gonna lose money on it that's for sure even if you just sit Absolutely. it even if you just sit it in your garage, I think you might have said that in your video, you sit it in the garage and, and even if you can't afford to do anything for the next 12 months, in 12 months' time, the way that prices of the 912s are going up, you know, looking at Bring a Trailer in the US, looking at sites in the UK, you know, they're jumping very, very fast. They're going up very, very quickly. And no doubt Absolutely. because of the, you know, people people like that it's like the underdog in a way, that it is the 912, it is mm. the four-cylinder. And also the prices of 65 to 69 911s are just insane. So you yes. have the same shape. You have exactly the same shape for, yeah. you know, what, a quarter of the price, really. Absolutely. And I think it's, you're right. Because originally what I wanted to do to it was I wanted to make it a easy to drive, daily drive a car. So I would make it ultimate, uh, completely reliable, uh, waterproof, and I'd probably do a bit of resto mod work to it. I might put in some electric air conditioning or something like that um just to just so it's easily usable and then if i did sell it on it would be sold on as a different proposition than it was originally and, and that's why it's not matching numbers i'm not wedded to anything about originality i can just do that so the first the, the first priority then is the priority with the 912 to get it mechanically sound to get it mechanically Absolutely. a1 and then worry about the rust and worry about what you can do on the body side of it Absolutely, yeah. So um, that's the remit I've given Jack. He's he's come up with a really long list of things to do. Um, so he's just going to start with getting stopping the oil leaks. I think the exhaust is leaking. I'll probably replace that at some point. The brakes are catching. He's going to do that. There's some wiring issues, and once that's resolved, then I'll probably just use it as much as I can. Yeah, uh, just yeah. to iron out all of those things. But I, I won't be able to use it during the winter because any rust that it's got will just get worse. But the thing about the 912, though, is, you know, the fact is, yeah, it's not fast, but it's that experience, isn't it? And that's why I want one. Yeah. And I know uh, some of my friends don't understand it, the why I would want one, because it's not really that fast and it's not, you know, it's so old. And But it's the, it's that experience, isn't it, which you stepping into a classic car. And you have, a, you have an MG, I noticed, on your YouTube as well. So you know yes. what it's like to step into something, you know, and be, you know, transported to a different era, really, a different generation. Absolutely. So so one of the things that uh, people always say that to me, oh, why would you drive something so old? Um, whereas, so when I drive the, my, so my wife has a Golf R. Right. Now, that's a modern sports hatch. It does 0 to 60 in something like 4.6 seconds. And it completely feels like a computer game. Yeah. You put your foot down, and as soon as you think, oh, I'm going quite fast, you are doing 100 miles an hour. Uh, whereas in my in in the Porsche, in the MG, uh, in both the Porsches and my MG, you know, there's there's the noise, the smell. There's the, like you say, you're transported to another time, and there's that slight feeling of terror that I'm not completely in control. Right, right. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I actually love that. And with with the MG, all of those things that are happening with the Golf R uh, that are happening at 100 miles an hour, and you think, oh my god, this is amazing. Um, they're happening at 45 miles an hour. Yep. And it, and it's um, and there's just something so mechanical and so you're so connected to it that um, I can't I, I don't even know if I can articulate it. And the lack of the safety features, the lack of all the safety aids that you know modern cars have. You know, you just it's just you and the car, isn't it? And you know the tires aren't yes. that wide, and the engine's not that fast, but the cars are light. You know, so everything feels. Yeah. I'm sure everything feels different. I've never driven a 912, but I could imagine it would be be quite amazing. 
my, my short drive, obviously, it was the whole. <laughs> it was the the fact that it doesn't have seat belts is really disconcerting because you you feel kind of naked. But you have to get um, the seat belts to get a MOT, right? You'd have to get seat belts, sash seat belts, and stuff. You don't because the period didn't demand it. Oh, really? And also, it's also it's MOT exempt. Oh, okay, okay. So it's actually road legal. When I drove it, it was completely road legal. It had tax and it had insurance, but it's exempt from MOT. Right. See, see, my situation is, you know, I'm I'm from Australia originally, and I have my 911s in Australia with our apartment in Australia. So I live between I live in Bahrain, but we also come to London a lot. So I've just been in London for like eight weeks, and then we're back there in November. Mm. Um, so I'm looking at 912s in the UK and I'm looking at them in Australia and I'm looking at exporting, you know, importing one from the US to, you know, into Australia. Um, but there you have to actually get it fully, you know, you have to get the seatbelts added, you have to change the headlights, you have to do something to the indicators, you know, so it all costs money when you bring it in. Um, but then the other, the other option is to buy, say, one in the UK, like the orange one, get it fixed up at specialists in the UK get the interior mm. fixed up by someone like uh, Gary at uh, Classic FX uh, and then drive it through Europe during the following summer if possible. So that's, wow. that's kind of the plan that, you know, if it's, <laughs> if it's safe enough and it works, maybe that could be a better thing to do. You know what I mean? Um, so that's yes. kind, of, kind um, of where I'm at. Would you take your car? This is the thing. Would you take your 912 to Europe? Will you get it ready and will you take it for a drive to Scotland or to Europe or would I, you rely I, so upon it? So my plan is... So my plan is, to, uh, in one of my future episodes on the YouTube channel, is to drive it to Scotland. Oh, perfect. Perfect. Um, and that would be as it is. So I would just get it back. I would take it for drives around here just to make sure that it was reliable and yep. then just hit the road. And Fantastic. And see what happens. Um, Fantastic. And Great it's one videos. Of those where, where, yeah, and, and that's the thing. It's, it's do the things that people don't have the scope or the time or the... Uh, they're not bold enough to do themselves. Uh, and obviously the, the thing about those videos is they're only entertaining when things go wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true, true. <laughs> so, but it's, the so speed, got, it's, a, it's still the speed of which you've done this. You know what I mean? You bought that 996 only a year ago. Now you've bought a 912. I mean, I think there's four videos there. I watched the last four videos and you were thinking about a 912 and then all of a sudden a month later you've bought one. It seems like there was only a month delay between those videos. There was, yes. So I, I don't really wait around. Um, yeah. And I am quite guilty of just acting on impulse. And I just think, you know what, that one looks okay. I'll go for that. And, you know, you win some, you lose some. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. what it means is you, that you're doing things. You're not procrastinating. And yes. the thing that I've noticed is everybody who says, well, oh, I would like a 911. And then they, they research the hell out of it. And then they go start going up the, the kind of price of 996s, like we talked about, towards the 997. And then suddenly the debate is different. Should I buy the most expensive 996 or should I be buying the cheapest 997? And then yeah. you've talked yourself out of it. Yeah. Suddenly you've talked yourself into inactivity. Yes. And, and I really try and try and not do that. So rather than have that internal debate, I just go, no, you know what? I'm just going to do that. I'm going to do it now. Good advice. Good advice. <laughs> hey, um, what are you going to do with the 996 though? So is the 996 staying in your garage or is that going? No, the nine and six is uh, is my daily car. Right. So it's it's just parked outside of a tree. <laughs> so there's... Um, it, it's never been in the garage. It's always just parked on the street. Okay. And nothing else has um, gone dramat- drastically wrong with that car. Everything else has been pretty okay since the last few months. Yeah, absolutely. Everything, such wood, is is just been absolutely fine. Apart from it's got uh, it needs a new exp- coolant water tank. Um, which I just had changed, but the pressure popped the, the threads off it. So um, it's still usable, um, but uh, that's something I need to get done. But I have no other plans for apart from just keep using it as it is. And um, if someone makes me a, a crazy offer, I'll probably sell it. Yeah. But I think it's become a, almost like a signature car for everything I'm doing because it was the first one that I took that leap on. And it's a car that I'm not afraid to use every day, take anywhere, leave anywhere. Um, and if they got a little ding, of course, I'll be upset, but I'm not devastated. And that's a good um, thing. Yeah. 
Yeah, but you, it's, it's a car that you shouldn't be afraid to use. And, and I wanted my 912 to be the same. I didn't yep. want it to be one that you polish and keep in the garage. My MG hasn't been washed for 10 years. And I think, <laughs> I think the way you're talking is, is the way that a lot of people are starting to think. And I don't know whether it's due to the current environment or whatever, but I don't know whether you watch Nick Murray on YouTube, the Nick Murray who does Porsche videos in the US. Um, and um, he's been I've around seen a couple. For, he's been around for a long time and he just bought a 993 cab, Right. He didn't want a cab. He wanted a coupe. He, you know, he didn't want it in blue, but he got blue. He, basically, everything he wanted, he just literally bought this car. It's manual, so it's a 993 manual. But as he said, it's like what you're saying. Even though it's, it's got scratches, it's not perfect inside, you know, it's got issues. Basically, mechanically, it's fine. But he's happy with it because he can drive it every day and he doesn't have to worry about it. You know what I mean? You don't have to worry about yep. scratches or dings or whatever because it's already got all those things on it. And I think that's a great, great way for Porsche ownership, a great way to look at Porsche ownership that you should be driving these cars. We all know they should be driven. You know what I mean? Um, yes. And my problem with my car in Australia at the moment is it's not being driven. And because of COVID, uh, we would go back a couple of times a year and I drive the car a few times a year and I haven't been able to get back since, uh, since I came to London in January. Um, so oh, wow. it's a bit of a worry that it's in storage for that long, but there's not yes. much I can do. Uh and, and I always think about why, if you bought it to enjoy, and one of the things that I always say is that when I'm dri- driving anywhere, there's, I, live, I lived in a village, so there's country lanes everywhere. And whenever you come around a bend, there's a bit of straight road. And in my head, I always go, yes, <laughs> just put my foot down. Yeah, and it's just yeah, that little yeah. bit of, I, I get that enjoyment of having a Porsche for every drive. There isn't that pootling about where you're stuck in traffic all the time. No. You just go, I've, I've been out, I've been to the shop and back and guess what? I had a really nice drive. It port. makes you want to drive. Um, it makes you want to go out and drive. It makes you just want to just go anywhere just to drive it. You know? Exactly. And and one of the things that um, I did say to so my friend that I had the initial debate with, um, that, that I said to him I was going to buy this 996, uh, two weeks later, he said, right, that's it, you've inspired me. And he went to Porsche Craft, Porsche Craft. Right, yeah. Um, yeah. And he went and test drove a 997. Okay. Um, a Carrera S. Yeah. And he, it's a convertible. He wanted a convertible. Yes. And, uh, and he test drove it, went for a 20-minute test drive, came back, and uh, the guy, the salesman said to him, have you got any questions? And he said, do you take credit cards? <laughs> <laughs> and he drove away with it that day. <laughs> Perfect. And he, and he said it's exactly the same. He said, you know, I popped down to the shops and when it's before I would go, I don't want to go outside. I'm not going to go to the shop. Someone else yeah. goes to the shop. Whereas now it's like, I'll go to the shop. And he said, every, the shop is 10 minutes away. I'm gone for 45 minutes. Every well, you just want to hear the sound, don't you? You just want to hear that sound. Like yeah. you said, when you put the foot down and you, you know, you're in a second or third and you put your foot down, you just want to hear it. You just want to feel it. And, exactly. and it's that and, weight. And, Until you've driven a 911, you, you know, when you first drive it, I remember the first time I drove my car, and it's like the weight when you go around a corner, the transfer of the weight, the rear wheel, you know, the yes. rear engine, and there's nothing like it, you know what I mean? And how it takes a corner. Yeah, yeah. and, you know, the, the thing that um, a lot of my friends have said to me is when, I, when they say, well, why do you redline it? It's an old car, it's got yeah. lots of mileage on it, and... Um, you know, you'll probably break it. And I always think, but that's what it's made for. That's his purpose in life. Exactly, exactly. (laughs) It's to be driven like that. And that's the enjoyment that if you were driving it like you would be driving your your golf or something else, you know, going to the shops, then what's the point? Yeah. Then why not just drive that golf? Why not stick it in a garage? No, that's that's the fun. That's the That's how you change gears in a 911, isn't it? That's how you do it. it. Exactly. And so, yeah, for me, it's just pure fun, the noise, the smell, the terror, all of it. I love but your, it. <laughs> your 996 doesn't have a short shifter, does it? It just has a standard shift? No. It's I, just everything's just standard on it. I changed mine about a year ago to the Porsche 997 uh, short shifter kit. And it, it at first, I didn't think it made any difference, but it, it actually makes a lot of difference. It's quite a lot more mechanical. It sort of clicks a bit more. Um, it really is a great upgrade to do to your 911 that kit uh they're not super expensive i don't think i think they're about 300 pounds or something maybe maybe a bit more i I think for me it's i'm i'm still following that philosophy of not spending any money on it unless i have to yeah um and my ultimate aim is to keep it going for as long as possible and keep it under the ten thousand pounds of cost in total Oh, okay. Um, okay. Because a lot of people get get them and start doing well i'll get rid of that scratch and i'll get rid of and i'll change that thing out because it's a bit shabby 
I'm not doing any of that. So is there um, is there a video on your channel where you go through all the costs you've spent to date? Where you've actually gone so yes. the listeners can go and watch that video? There's a video there? Yes, there's one. Um, I did uh, the video after exactly one year of ownership. Oh, okay. Um, because I know people... A, a, People like to see that. People like to see the cost that, you know, what they're going to be up for and what they have to do. And especially with yours, where you sort of bought it pretty much unchecked and just bought, you know, got a good price on it. People like to see what, what the cost is going to be when that, once they take ownership. Yeah. So what, what I did was I broke it down into a couple of things. One was the, the absolute um, essential things that needed doing to it. So I put that down on one list and I then put the cost down of that. That's the ownership, buy it and, and get all the things that need doing. And the other one was where I spent a couple of things that didn't 100% need doing, but it would have been nice to do. Like the battery was a bit flaky, but it still started up every morning and it made a difference changing that. Uh, but there were a couple of things. I got pressured by a few people to try and change the exhaust pipes because it's got the old pea shooter, then exhaust oh, okay. pipes. Yep. Yep. Um, so I bought secondhand ones, but I, I never changed them because I can't be bothered. And when somebody says, oh, God, they look awful, I always say, but I can't see them when I'm driving it. But the air conditioning you got fixed, and it wasn't super expensive, was it? I think you... No, it was, uh, yeah, it was about 300 and something pounds. And it was basically the classic 996 damage was someone had stuck a jack under it and jacked the pipe. Oh, ah, really? It. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, so when I got it, so the lady had told me, she thought the air conditioning worked, but when I got there, the the fan belt wasn't going around the air conditioning pulley, and I thought, oh, it's yep. probably the pump's gone or something. Uh, so I just went and bought uh, a, a fan belt for 20 quid, put that on. Um, after watching a YouTube video on how to do it, <laughs> I put that on, um, and it didn't make any clunks or noises or anything. I okay. pressed the air conditioning button, and it kicked in. Um, so, but there's no cold air. I went to <laughs> I went to the local garage, and I said, oh, can you pump up the air conditioning? And he went, okay. And I uh, drove it. I was at lunchtime from work. I drove it back to the office and it was ice cold air conditioning. I was so happy. And then I sat at my desk and I could see the car out the window and I looked and there was just a screen puddle under it <laughs> <laughs> where, all the, where, where all of the, yeah, the gas yeah, yeah. was coming out and liquid. Uh, so I just went to, to Jack and he, he changed it out for me and it was done. It's been fine ever since. Quite a good fix. Um, so yeah. back, can we just go back to the 912? Because I, I how do you find the left-hand drive in the UK? I know you only drove it that um, once, but how did you find it? I mean, I watched the video, so but I found it less less discombobulating than driving a left-hand drive car in Europe. So I've been on holiday where we've had you know rentals, yes, and I find those harder because you're always trying to judge the road from the wrong side of the car on the wrong side of the road, as far as you're concerned. Yeah. But whereas over here, you naturally go to the left-hand side of the road. And it was actually fine. I haven't been around a roundabout or anything, but just hitting the road, I didn't have to think about anything other than where's the gear, where's the indicator, where's the where's the pedals. Yeah. Um, I didn't have to think about where am I on the road? Am I too close to the center? Am I too close to the left? Which is what I do when I'm in Europe. Yeah. I mean, so we... It's much easier on that. I find left-hand drive. I mean, we moved to Bahrain, you know, early last year. Um, and I've never really driven that much on the left on, as a left-hand drive vehicle. Um, so I found it really quite challenging at first, like where I get out of the car and I'm just stressed from being in there, especially roundabouts, you know what I mean? Because mm. it is that thing where you yeah. keep, you know, it's like the mantra I keep saying, you just keep putting in your head, you know, keep to the right, look left, keep to the right, look left, yeah. just so you don't go the wrong direction, especially when there's no cars on the road. You know what it's like even in Europe. And then you're going yeah. to go around a roundabout and it's got multiple exits and you think, hang on, where am I supposed to be on the road? Um, but I was always thinking, Absolutely. you know, if I get a 912 and say I do send it back to Australia eventually, what is it going to be like? Even in the UK, actually, what is it going to be like to drive it uh, on the other side of the road? It's, it's actually, it's been, it was surprisingly natural. Um, okay. I, I don't like it for one reason, because I live in, uh, there's a lot of country lanes here. You can't overtake Right. Um, because you, you can't see what's coming. And so it's just impossible to do. But um, I did look into a lot of what it would take to convert it to right-hand drive. Oh, okay. Um, and it's just so, all of the parts are just so in integral to the structure of the mm, car. So I the wouldn't dash do it. is metal. And, yeah. Yeah, so I, 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 I do it. It's just too, it's, it's just too much work. Because my MG, I did convert that. Oh, okay. Because it was, it was back from the US, but it was made to be a right-hand drive car that was then sent over to the US. So yeah. it was just steering, like steering column dash and some wiring, and that was it. 
There was a trend. Uh, where, I think there was a trend in like the eighties and nineties in Australia where like you know, they would convert left-hand Porsches to right-hand. I mean, there's quite, you know, they mm. come up for sale and it's done professionally changed over. But, you know, I watched a video once, uh, once of someone that was looking at a Porsche and they took it apart and basically they showed you where they did the changeover and it was really poorly done where the hole is still left over from the other one and it's not fixed yep. up properly. And, you know, there's some horror stories there when on those some of those conversions. Um, but, you know. I yeah, wouldn't, I wouldn't do it for a night, but I wouldn't do it for a night. Sorry for interrupting. I wouldn't do it for a nine twelve because I think you know there's also the possibility that someone in the US might want to buy your car. Yes, there there is that, and I never really think of that far ahead. So I'm not. I'm, I'm just thinking about my own enjoyment of it. Um, but it would just be, it would just would make it economically it wouldn't be uh, viable, and you'd structurally change it so much that you might just find, hang on, this is actually now rubbish. Whereas yeah, before, true. at least I was driving it. Um, so you just go, no, I'll, I'll, and, and one of my friends has lots of cars that he buys from Europe and he's a little bit like me. He will just phone somebody up and say, oh, you've got this car. What do you think? Blah, blah. And he will just catch a flight over there. It might've been parked for absolutely ages, years, and he will just jump in and drive it back from Napoli was the last one he bought, yeah, drove yeah. back. Um, and what a way to get it. I, I just, I just love that, you know, the not knowing, is it going to get home? Um, yeah. and as long as you've got, you know, breakdown cover and it'll get you home and you, you're not on a time limit, uh, it's not like it's a top gear challenge or something. Then, uh, so it's, when are you going to drive it again? When are you driving the 912 again? You must be dying to get into it again and, and get a feel uh, for it. Well, actually I, I am dying to get into it and drive it and get a feel for it. There's a slight problem. I have one garage. Oh, okay. and my MG's in it at the right. moment. So I so I said to Jack, oh, take your time. Yeah, there's no rush. <laughs> while, I try, yeah, yeah. while I try to organize some storage for that's, my MG. And that's that, that spontaneous nature. Problem. That's that spontaneous nature yeah. on a Friday night buying a 912 after a bottle of wine. Yeah. Well, yeah, that was it. And when I collapsed on the floor after I'd won the bidding and my wife was sat there sipping a wine and she just went, you've just bought a car, haven't you? And, uh, and I went, yes. And <laughs> so when I sat up, she said, so what are you going to do next? And I went, well, first, can I have some money? <laughs> <laughs> Does your wife like the 912? Does she like the 912 uh, or the 996? She, she likes the 912. She likes the look of it and yeah. the idea behind what I'm doing. The 996 I've had for 18 months and she's been in it once. Right. And that was when we went somewhere and I said, oh, we're going in that. And she went, okay. Um, she she's not a fan of it because she just thinks, why have you bought that? Whereas she gets the 912 because she thinks, well, it's a beautiful car. Uh, yeah, to her, that is. looks beautiful. Yeah. Um, but when I bought the 996, she was like, oh, I can't, I just can't be bothered. She's not, <laughs> she never, she lets me just carry on with what I'm doing. Um, but I saw her walk back from, she'd been out somewhere. She walked past the 996 and stopped and looked at it. And she came in and she said, I'll, I'll grant you one thing. She said, it's a pretty looking car. <laughs> yeah, yours has um, yours has different headlights, right? Yours is a '98, but it doesn't have the orange headlights, does it? Wasn't no, the I think someone's changed that. They changed the headlights yeah, think, out, right? The reflector. Yeah, yeah. Someone must have changed that because it, it should be orange. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and you know, someone said to me, "Oh, I've got some orange ones. Do you want them?" Uh, and they were stupid amounts of money, and I'm like, "What for? No, there's no. just no point in spending that kind of money. I just want to spend the money on keeping it going and enjoying the driving side of it." Yeah, and good idea. I've I've always been one of those people. I, you know, if the if the surface rust tons of it appeared on my 912, I wouldn't care as long as it's structurally sound and it works, and I enjoy driving it then I've, I'm winning. Yep, that's the way to look um, at it. I'm sure there's people listening actually who think, you know, you know, you have the start of an ideal three-car three, three car Porsche collection. You have the 996, <laughs> future classic, classic already. People are chasing after it already. Prices are going up. The 912. So if you bought another one, Ajmal, if you bought one more Porsche, what would it be? What would, what oh, would complement the 996 and 912? If you had the garage space, which I know you don't, but if you did... <laughs> I think that's it. I think it's an easy one for me. I think it'd be a 68 911 Targa. A Targa, yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Just something I like about them. I like the the way that the silver band goes over the top and yep. the way you can take that top off. Um, and I would have gone for a, a Targa to begin with, but um, they, they would just either I'd have to import it from somewhere um, or, um, or 
I have to spend a lot more money. Yeah, they're going um, up in but, money a lot. The targets are very sought after. The soft window um, 912s are crazy money. They're going for crazy money. They are absolutely crazy money. But my only problem with the, the soft window is I'm not really a fan of convertible cars, even though I have an MGB, a yeah. uh, Roadster. Um, I just... I don't know why. I'm not really a fan of convertibles. I don't know why. And mostly because um, over over here in the UK, it's either raining or it's it's baking hot. Uh, so, yeah. and I don't have any hair, so uh, I'm I just have to wear a hat anyways. <laughs> so you've like, only got a you've only got those few months in the year in UK, haven't you? You've got the th- you know those few months. I mean, I've spent a lot of time in UK, so I know what you mean. It's just like if you don't if you miss those few months, then that's it. It's over. Absolutely. And this year has been, because we've been in lockdown and the weather has been amazing from yeah. early March. So yeah. I've been out in my MG, I've been out in my Porsche. The difficulty is because you're not going to work and you, you're everything's being delivered, you're not going to the shop. Um, I found myself trying to find a reason to go out and some days I would just go, just, I'm, I'm working from home, my lunch is going to be, I'm going out for a drive in the Porsche. And it got to the point where it had, you know, green moss growing on it because it had been parked so long um, and I wouldn't drive it for two weeks at a time to three weeks at a time. And the first, when we first went into lockdown, I think I left it for eight weeks. So no problem um, starting? Uh, the, the, the eight weeks I had to charge the battery and that's when I knew it was weak, so I, got, I bought a new battery for it. Right, right. Um, so since then, no problems. I've, I've, since then, I think I've left it for three and a half weeks and it just started up absolutely. Perfect. Perfect. Um, and so I, I think that's the thing. I, I don't make any long journeys. You know, my mum lives a hundred miles away. I don't go and visit her because she's in a very vulnerable category with the pandemic. Yes. So there's, you know, my, my drive is that I just hit the country lanes. Just yeah. Walk, well, it's, walk, it's good that you're in the area. You can. I mean, those country lanes are pretty fantastic. When I was back in London uh, last month, I met up with a Another person I met on Instagram, actually, who has a 997 Carrera 4S, and we went out to um, Goodwood just for a drive out Ooh. through those country Ooh. roads. Uh, and it was, it was fantastic. And, you know, along the way, there were so many 997s. I saw a Carrera GT. There was classic Porsches. Yep. You know, it was, the day, it was a Sunday, so it was, it was the day for driving. But some of those roads are fantastic. They're just absolutely fantastic in the back of uh, – outside of London. Absolutely. And and I think that's part of the reason why I wanted a car like that, because if I lived in the middle of the city and I had to go drive a long way yeah. to go and get that enjoyment, whereas for me now, it's instant. I literally turn out of where I live and I'm on a country lane. Yeah, the 912 um, would be perfect around those those roads. Perfect. Ex- exactly. And As would it's the a bit more... As would the Absolutely, <laughs> but uh, but I, I don't. I you know I've, I've got no money now. I've got, I've got two pennies to rub together. So uh, I, I think it'll be a very long time unless someone pays me a huge amount of money for both of mine, and I can go and buy a nine eleven Targa. Um, but um, but you said you you thought about importing from the US, and I, th- I don't think it's actually that difficult now to import. It's it's not um, that difficult. No, um, there was a. I mean, do you go to Beverly Hills Car Club? Do you look at that site? Uh, yes, I've contacted them about a couple yeah, of them. Yeah, because he had They're, a lot. They, mm. He had a Targa, didn't he? A 911 Targa. Um, mm. That was the sandy beige, kind of grey-coloured one. Mm. Um, and I messaged him about that. And I, I felt like at the time when I first saw it, I thought, no, I think there's better value ones around because once I've imported it and I've done all the work to get it going, because it uh, it's the fuel-injected one that was, wasn't it? I think so, yeah. The fuel injector, the yeah, 2.4. He gets a lot um, of good cars in, though. He does get a good, lot of good ones. He, he does, yes. So, and then the, the other one was, uh, it's the New York. Is it Gullwing? Gullwing Cars? Right. Um, I haven't seen that one. So he, he, get, he, get, he has a few as well. Um, they're, they're priced a lot higher, I guess, cause he's, because he's in New York. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but the uh, Beverly Hills Car Club, they 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 get some really good ones, and they just you know they turn them over quite quickly. Apart from that 911 Targa, which yeah. is still there. The first one I saw on Beverly Hills Car Club was a 1965 Irish green, original Ooh. color matching. He had it. I can't I can't remember wow. the price. It wasn't super expensive, but it was a three dial painted three dial in Irish green, and it was like, oh my god, that's. That's so cool. <laughs> that's, that's my ultimate. Yeah, I think I think it was about forty thousand US. I, I don't think it, it was at the beginning of COVID. It must have been around March or April, and it was around forty. I think forty forty five thousand US, which is not cheap, but for that sixty five, which is quite rare, uh, and three dial yeah. and good condition. So, so, so I did contact somebody in Cleveland. 
Um, and now he had one that was completely dismantled. And it was in grey primer and it had lots oh, really? of rust cut out of it. And it was due to be welded together. And he was selling it for seventeen and a half thousand dollars Wow, that's and good. So, and, and the thing is, he said it's all complete. You know, he's got all the bits. The engine's just had $4,000 spent on it. Here's the receipt. Um, and I started looking at how much it would cost to get it over here, something like $2,000. I'd have it insured, everything delivered to my house. Um, and I'd managed to sort of haggle him down to $13,500. Okay. Um, and then I just thought, I just it will mean that I'll be waiting so long before I get to drive yeah, it. Yeah, true. You're going to put it together. <laughs> Yeah, because I'll have to get it, get the welding all done, made right. I'll have to get it uh, sprayed. That's, you know, you're talking 20,000 pounds straight away. Um, and then I've got to put it back all together. And that will yeah. be months, possibly years. And, you know, you lose interest, yes. you um, lose your enthusiasm, and you come back to it. And I thought, no, I need something that I can just get in and start driving. And that's no, the I... whole excitement of buying it. True, true. And your 912 looks good. I mean, you, you said the auction site, I think, on your video, and I had a look at it uh, at the auction site, the pictures of it. Because I don't think you've actually done a proper walk around yet, have you? You haven't really done a walk no, around. No, I haven't. I, 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 I need to take possession you, of you, it. You but. tease people by doing a drive on the inside and you didn't show the outside of the car. Because I wonder if you didn't get a thousand <laughs> comments saying, what about the outside? I did. I did. I got people messaging me directly saying, when are we going to see the outside of it? And there's, some, there's a few dealers out of France who contacted me saying, when are we going to see the outside? Because they've been watching it on oh, okay. the auction site. And they said we didn't bid on it because we thought it was fake. Oh, really? Um, yeah, he said, oh, it's, well, it was too cheap for what it looked like. And um, we just thought, we just assumed it was some fake thing. No, the images um, actually look, it actually looks like a good car. You look at the images, you think that's a good buy for 30000 Yeah, and, that, and that's the thing. It's <laughs> I'm still worried that there's just some horrors under, you know, body filler and under seal and seam sealer and things like that. But... If, if the floors are, are done right, which I'll get checked out properly, that they're properly attached to the body and they're welded, then structurally I think it's sound and everything else I'll, I'll deal with as it comes up. Um, but I'm not sure how long I would have it because my, my my original plan was just to go, put it slate grey, immaculate deep gloss paint, yes, and do a, a deep tan brown interior. Sounds perfect. And then do the rest and Love do the, the resto mod stuff. Love the slate grey. No hubcaps, just the yeah. raw, just the raw wheel. No, absolutely no caps. raw wheel. I love the yeah. wheels so, so like I, that. Mm. Yeah, so I want steel wheels. Uh, yep. I want a roof rack. Yep. Um, so it's going to be that kind of beachy vibe, but with a really yeah. sumptuous interior. Sounds fantastic. You've seen all those places that sell all those parts, like Stoddards and is it Sierra Madre or Sierra Madre? Yes. And they have the roof racks yeah. and things like that. Yeah. All of those. And, and the thing is, I don't want to go for the really expensive ones because um, I still want to do it on a budget. And I still want people to know the, the uh, on my YouTube channel for them to watch and go, yeah, I could yeah. do that. I, Great. I could go and buy one. Start Great videos. And put those things on. Great videos with the 912. You should do more. They're, they're, that's what people want to see. 912, 996. Yeah. So yeah, there's definitely going to be more. Um, the MG, I actually drove. I actually drove it to that auction place um, where I bought this one from to sell the MG. I right. phoned him up and I said, "Look, I want to sell my MG." And he went, "Fine, bring it down. We'll do all the photographs. We'll polish it up." Um, I got there. It was a glorious sunny day when I drove there, there really? and I got out of the car. And he went, "Oh, so this is the MG?" And I went, "I've changed my mind. I'm not selling it." <laughs> That's what happens. That's what happens. Can't think about yeah. it. Can't think about exactly. it. Exactly. And it's the most common classic car in the world, um, yeah. the MG. But you owned that for a long time, correct? You, sorry, you've owned that for a yeah, long time. Tw yeah, 22 years. Wow. Um, and, and, and there's a big history for me behind it because I always I, I was in love with like a Jaguar E-Type Series 1 Roadster. And yeah. you know, there's no way I was going to be able to afford one of those. My dad, when I was a kid, worked for Jaguar cars where I saw one first. Oh, okay. And so, and then I saw this MG and I thought, well, that looks all right. And then I saw that it originally had been marketed as the poor man's E type. Uh, okay. And I thought, that's, that's like a sign I need to go and buy one. Yeah. Yeah. So I yeah. bought it, got someone to do all the welding for me. And then I started putting it together. I had no idea how to work on cars. I went and bought a Haynes manual. Yeah. And, um, and it, and it was, uh, it was quite comical. I mean, me trying to do it because I had to lift and join the engine and the gearbox together and put it in myself. 
And then I did, I remember the wiring, I took off another car, I labeled it, pulled it through and all the labels came off and I've got this wiring thing. I don't know where anything goes. Wow. So I just literally threw it in the car and wherever the wires landed, I just connected them up <laughs> <laughs> and, believe, and believe it or not, it fired up or the electronics worked. Yeah. And my dad was ill at the time and he knew all about cars. And I remember saying, he said to me, does it work? And I said, look, the ignition's come on, but nothing's happening. I don't, I don't know what's up with it. And, uh, and he said, just look by the fuse box. There'll be a loose black wire just bolted to the body and you'll be fine. Yep. Said, what is he talking about? What is he talking about? So I went and had a look and sure enough, there's a wire. And he was right. Bolted to the body. Uh, and he was right in the car started <laughs> up and I couldn't believe it. Great story. Uh, so, so I had this little bond with my dad uh, over it. We, we never really bonded uh, over anything. And, and we had this little bond and he died very soon after that. Um, so it kind of, I had this nice story with it, but I don't yeah. know how attached I am to it as a, a maybe, sentimental thing. I maybe you shouldn't sell it. Maybe you should keep it. I know. Well, I've organized some storage, which is a lot of money. Yeah. Uh, storage uh, in I, London I is expensive. Huh? It's like 250 pounds yeah. a month or more, depending on where you get it well, from. Well, I'm, I'm sort of South Oxfordshire. Oh, okay. Um, so, so I can go and find a unit somewhere and there'll be a space with other people of keeping their cars yeah, and yeah. it'll be something like 150 pounds a month. Uh, so cool. I'll, I'll keep it until the spring and then I'll make I'll a, decision. a decision. Yeah. I'll, don't yeah, rush in. Don't rush into it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That's it. And you know, see if I, if I enjoy driving the Porsche so much, which why wouldn't I, uh, who, who knows what I might decide. Ajmal, thank you so much. That was a, that was it's great. Been lovely. Thank you for for chatting on the um, Portugal podcast. And this is uh, this is what I call the owners' stories. And this is the th- you're number three. You're the third person to be on owners' stories. Ooh. So um, this one's going to go up on Tuesday, and people are probably listening to it already, saying, "Why am I saying that?" But this will be live on Tuesday. <laughs> um, but in but I want people to go to your YouTube channel. So it's flat cap driver. Yep, flat flat cap driver uh, on Instagram. Find me on Instagram or uh, YouTube. The videos will be more regular uh, in the future when I actually take uh, possession of the car because at the moment the weather's a bit grotty, the MG's in the garage, work is insane. But uh, once I take ownership of it, there'll be the walk around, there'll be more drives in it, and there'll be more stories about what I might do and hopefully it won't explode. <laughs> and, I, and I know your content, honestly, I know that I, a lot of the people that listen to this podcast, uh, some people have followed me on my YouTube channel. There's a lot of Porsche owners. There's a lot of people that want to buy a Porsche. There's a lot of people that are just enthusiasts but love Porsche as a brand. Um, so I know there's going to be I know there's going to be people that are going to go to your channel and enjoy it for sure because um, it's it's the kind of story that we all like to um, we all like to watch and listen to. So I think it's fantastic. Well, so I'm glad I came across you. I'm glad I searched Porsche 912 last weekend, <laughs> and I'm glad you didn't think I was some crazy person hounding you on Instagram to come onto a podcast. Um, so thank <laughs> no. you, thank you for coming on. No, it's been it's been amazing, and um, you, you're right. It's it's purely just for that enjoyment of doing it. And I've not been very good at marketing my channel and or providing regular content. I've not done any of that. Uh, so I'm going to try and be better, mostly because I want to hear about other people's stories. And it'd be nice to hear from people that, oh, you've inspired me to do something. Yeah. I, by the way, I take no responsibility yeah. <laughs> for what you're about well, to do, uh, but I want to hear those stories. I'm looking forward to the 912 videos, so keep posting them. And I'm sure there's, there's, so, many, and there's so many videos there people can catch up on as well. You know, all the 996 series, you bought the cheapest 996. Yes. There's, there's quite a lot of them, so plenty there for people to catch up on. Yeah, absolutely. There'll be more 912 videos coming very soon. All right. Thanks, Ajamal. Thank you very much for chatting today. Thank it's you. been fantastic. Uh, thank you, everyone, for listening to the Porsche Cool Podcast. As you know, you can find this on Apple, Spotify, Google, and everywhere else. Great talking to Flat Cap Driver uh, today, and um, we'll talk to each other soon. Thanks for listening. Bye for now. Mm-hmm.